Hey, what's up guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sarkuccia. And these are the two reds. One we caught one night, one we caught at Jetty's. And we're going to go ahead and fill him up along with the bull red that we tagged at the Board A Jetty's. So, I wanted to show the guys how quickly I can kind of get it done. And I'll show you all too. Stress on my mind, it's a nice day to go. Yeah, I got a line, I'm a caller, the whole team. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the slot reds. He's rinsing off the other red fish and getting his back so we don't have all that slime on it, so it'll be easier to fillet. As you can tell, what I do is I go right above the rib cage and I go well, right above the dorsal line and I go all the way down to the backbone and then come around the rib cage. This allows me to fillet the fish without having to skin it and or scale it to skin it kind of deal. And also too, since we do have a good amount of fish and I really don't like messing with the throat area or the stomach area, then I can come around it and the only bones I have to cut out are the three to five little bones that run alongside the rib cage. So yep, that's what I'm doing here. Well, here comes a big bull red. A lot of people look at it and they're like, man, that thing is so hard and this and that. It's because they're always trying to go through the scales. But if there's a thin membrane between the top end of the scales and where the fish fin actually comes out, and if you slip your blade right between there, it makes it real easy to fillet away the meat. And if you do it the same way I did those slot reds, you can actually pull a lot of meat away from there and not mess with having to scale it and the whole big old mess of stuff like that. That's why a lot of people normally stay away from it. And for me, normally I don't do the bull reds because we like to leave them, but at the same time, 
you know, we are legally able to do two bull reds per year. And if I'm doing a big family affair where I plan on feeding them fish, I will do bull reds because they hold a lot of meat and shark because I can keep one or two of those and be done with doing the, the fish fry or whatever we're doing to feed the whole family. So like I said, I'd rather keep a few of these than have to fillet up like 10 to 15 or 20 of them to do the amount of meat that we need to feed a family and stuff. And as y'all seen, we got pretty big family functions when we did have them and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll do. Well, there you go. It's all filleted off. And what I'm also showing him was there's some meat that's right up on the top end of the skull. And I was even showing him that there are some cheek muscle um, meat there that some people actually pull off. A lot of this gets cooked off when people actually boil up the heads of the fish and they eat all of that. Which I hear is a natural aphrodisiac. Now, I don't know about that, but... I do know where there is meat and we usually do cook it up and stuff like that. So, yep, there's that in the throat, you know. So, I've seen a lot of people just fry them up whole. I've eaten them like that as a youngster. But now I just I have too many little kids that haven't learned how to eat fish without digging out the bones and or choking. So, yeah.
So right here, you see me cutting out that little rib cage area that sticks up above the rib cage. And I cut that out, split my fillet in half, and get it away from the skin without having to scale the fish. And as you can see, I've already done three fish, and there's hardly any scales all over the place. This is a good way of having to fillet your fish in-house. It's a way to do it without getting a complete mess everywhere and stuff like that. Flying scales go do a lot of uh, uh, smell everywhere when they start getting flicked out of the fish when you're trying to scale them and stuff like that. So this is a way to help you out. Alright, so I'm going to start with the uh, Big Bull Red and I do the same thing with them is I take out those little bit of spines that are right there and like I said, once you cut that out, there is no more bones left over in that huge fillet of meat right there and uh, like I said, it's been a while so I'm just double checking, make sure I didn't leave any in there and I'm going all the way to the skin so that way when I do start to fillet it off, I can start that as my main cut and I make them as wide as the gallon bags that we're going to be putting the fillets in and that's all solid meat right there look at that that is beautiful i love those backstrap pieces because what i can do is i can cut them down not lengthwise but perpendicular wise to make basically small nuggets out of them which makes it real easy for me to feed the kids and the family to get multiple pieces on one plate without them falling off so it really does go a long way on how you fillet your fish and which direction you do and yes it really does work out a lot of people don't like the bloodline in the fish or the red the red meat in there i really do because i think it's kind of like the brown meat of the chicken it just seems to be sweeter and more moist in there so that's the reason why i actually i don't mind it i really I actually like it so i don't know just everybody's different that's me he was saying he didn't like it so i was like well i guess i can cut it off you know and that's what I started doing toward the next fillet, but on this one I left it, so. And there you go. That's high fillet, slot, and bullfish because they run the same formula, you know, for reds. It's the same thing, it's just on a bigger scale. And so, time to clean up Ugh, the dirty part. <laughs>